sweaty. This city and this country have gone through a tremendous amount of change. And it's not finished just yet. From an impoverished communist country that arose out of the war, Vietnam has now become one of Asia's fastest growing economies. And young Vietnamese are growing up in a society that would be unrecognizable to both their parents and their grandparents. Yet there's something the Vietnamese have held onto, not just out of nostalgia, but conviction. Their taste. It's a ritual every Hanoian knows. Eating street food in the chaotic back alleys of Hanoi, among the onslaught of motorcycles, squeezed between the sweaty bodies of fellow diners on low plastic stools. Inhaling that bowl of fragrant broth and silky rice noodles is like tasting culinary history passed down through the generations, perfected through the years. Food has sustained the nation through a whiplash of changes, from being a French colony, through decades of war, to unification as a communist state, to rapid modernization. And women have been at the forefront of keeping these culinary traditions alive, whether it be at home, in restaurants, or on the streets. When the Vietnam War, or the American War as it is called here, ended in 1975, North and South Vietnam were reunified. But the transition to a communist country was not easy. Inflation soared, production crashed, and food was scarce. So the government switched gears in 1986, opening up their markets and introducing economic reforms called doi moi. Vietnam began changing overnight as capitalism crept in. Microbusinesses started popping up all over the country, and doors opened up for Vietnamese women to participate in this informal marketplace. Food was already the domain of women, but now they can make money off of it. When you walk around the city, you'll notice that the majority of the street vendors are women. To survive in this competitive market, street vendors fiercely guard their family recipes. Even the street corners are inherited, so when Hanoians have a craving for specific dishes, they know exactly where to go. And for ban quan, or steamed rice rolls, this was the spot. One of your customers told me that this is the best ban quan in Hanoi, and maybe in Vietnam. Why do you think your ban quan is the best? This is the time I was 12 years old, but I was 60 years old. Wow! So that's why it's so good, because you're an expert in making this. Dùng phải gạo, phải gạo thật ngon mới làm được. Cái vỏ bánh của nó phải dẻo và ngon. Và trong nhân thì là thịt lợn và hành tây. Cô đang tráng ra đây đâu, cô cho nhân này, cô đang tráng này. Ăn vào và mấy nước mắm. Đây là rau, đây là rau để ăn lên cuốn. And so we just put this in here? Rồi, chấm vào đây, tao chấm vào đây. Okay, this is going to sound a bit perverse, but it's a, it feels like skin. It does. <laughs> Against your tongue. Yeah, and when you like burn the roof of your mouth. <laughs> I could eat a million of these. I could eat a million of these. Còn đây là dưới đâm ra nó ngon hơn và là biết cách chọn gạo hơn. Thì vì vì mẹ đã để lại cho cái nghề như thế là ta phải giấu nghề hơn. This work isn't easy. We wakes up at the crack of dawn to set up shop. She's one of the tens of thousands of Vietnamese women street vendors who are a lifeline for their families. Vì nó vui cả sống cả một cái gia đình cô. Lên sự nghiệp cũng là cái chỗ này. Con cái ăn học cũng từ cái chỗ này lên thôi. Rồi cứ món đi đi làm cái khác có thể nhàn hơn. Thế nhưng mà cô muốn giữ lại cái nghề này để có cái món ăn cổ truyền này thì đâm ra cô phải làm. Like how do you sec secure your own spot to sell food? Vì cô ngồi lâu rồi, cô đấy ngồi cách đây là gần 30 năm rồi. Chị cô đã ngồi 15 rồi, xong bây giờ đến cô ngồi là 20 năm. Nguyên cô ngồi đã đã 20 năm rồi. Khó khăn thì trải qua thì lúc khó khăn là lúc bị công an đuổi. Người ta không cho ngồi đây nữa. 
Nhưng mà sau khi vì bọn cô trình bày là vì đây cái món này là món tại người ta lúc người ta bắt cô phải về của chỗ cô bán từ đấy bắt đầu mới người ta mới đồng ý cho bọn cô cái trình bày là cái món này để phục vụ cho những khách phương xa các nước phương xa đến khắp thế giới người ta biết cái món ẩm thực của Việt Nam mình là rất là ngon. Urbanization policies in the early 2000s aimed to clean up the city by pushing vendors off the streets. Although Bui was able to convince the authorities, others are not always so lucky. It's especially tough for mobile street vendors, who don't have a designated location. They roam the city with their goods on their shoulders or on their bikes. Three, our local producer, introduces to a woman named Trung. She's been working as a street vendor for the last 15 years, selling balloots or hard-boiled duck embryo. So we, we're gonna have balloon eggs. Uh, it called, it's actually duck egg have been developed for like five days, and it's very very popular uh, street food in Vietnam. Yeah. Show, show us how it's done. Oh okay. yeah, there is a ginger, mm. this is ginger, and this kind of herb. What is it? It's, it's very have a very strong stingent kind of taste. Oh, wow. Yeah, you see, it's very it very sharp. It is very, very sharp. Very sharp, sharp taste. Sharp taste. Yeah. And then we, we put, actually we put a little bit of vinegar with the uh, garlic mm. and uh, chili. Chili, but you see the, the, the duck inside. Yeah. You see the beak, the eyes, this is basically the head. It's good. It's good? Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, I think the ginger pairs really nicely with this. Mm. I've had this in Philippines before, but it doesn't come with all these herbs that right. you eat it with in Vietnam. And I feel like it's the same with a lot of the Vietnamese food you eat. It's very fragrant, it's very herby, and lots of garnishes. Mm, I really like that. Like most street vendors, Trung moved from the countryside to support her family. She sleeps in a small dorm in the city and only returns once a month, if she's lucky. But she said it was better than working in the fields, which is what she would be doing back home. Playing cat and mouse with police is the toughest part of this job. Yeah. When street vendors are caught by the police, they can be arrested, fined, or even have their things confiscated. Do you think there's a danger that, you know, street food vending is going to stop? I think that the police and the government, they allow it to exceed to a certain level. I guess it's too important to their culture, right? The everyday life. Yeah, and also the livelihood of people as well. Like the, the person we meet, right, with the uh, balut eggs, it her livelihood. As long as you cannot find other alternatives for people, for livelihood of people, you cannot stop street food. In modern Hanoi, mobile street vendors were seemingly losing ground to fancy storefronts and Western fast food chains. Officially, Vietnam is still a socialist state but one that's increasingly embracing the benefits of capitalism. Thuy has witnessed these changes throughout her life. I've been seeing quite a few Western fast food chains. Is that a thing now? Yes, Western fast food actually become a trend in Vietnam now. And so who are the people who are actually eating this? I think mostly the kids and the young people, they really like the Western fast food. It's very expensive compared to the street food in Vietnam, but it's considered like status symbol for people to eat that. But if Western fast food is a symbol of the changing times and changing tastes in Vietnam, then state-run food shop number 37 is a reminder of the hard times of the past. Tôi cũng thấy mừng là các bạn trẻ thì rất là háo hức và muốn tò mò, muốn tìm lại cái gì đó mà trước đây bố mẹ và ông bà mình đã trải qua. This is Dang Than Thuy. Her restaurant is modeled after the government-run food shops from the subsidy period. It's an homage to the hardship before the Doi Moi reforms, when private business was illegal and ration coupons were issued for food. She's teaching us how to make pickled cabbage, stir-fried in lard. Wow, that's quite a lot of fat. Is it bad if I just want to drink it? 
đây là một món ăn uh, được tái hiện lại thời đó khi mà cuộc sống nó rất là khó khăn. So all these ingredients were they difficult to get during subsidy time? Uh, rất là khó khăn. Phần mỡ này là được phải đi xếp hàng và mua bằng uh, tem phiếu. Yum. Finish. Ngày đấy thì không có gì để mà ăn thì tôi nghĩ rằng để được một đĩa cá này thì nó là vô cùng tuyệt vời rồi Thì không có ước mong gì hơn bây giờ nghĩ lại cái cảm giác đó tôi cũng vẫn còn nhớ lắm So today's meal would have been beyond luxurious On the table we had sweet potato stem stir fry, poached fish, fried tofu with scallions, crab soup and boiled pork with star fruit When you eat these things Now, do they taste the same to you? Because now there's, you know, so much abundance yeah. of food. So, tôi nghĩ là hai cái cảm giác nó khác nhau. Thì lúc đó thèm và muốn lắm. Vì nó khó và nó có ít thì rất là ngon. Cái gì cũng ngon nếu mà có như thế này thì là 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 không thể đừng được sẽ ăn hết mất. Nhưng vẫn cứ phải gắng nhớ, nhớ đến nhớ lại một thời đã trải qua của đất nước lịch sử của đất nước rất là khó khăn. My grandmother used to do the same thing, It's like you know carbs in carbs with potatoes or sweet potatoes during the war time. Like this necessity makes people have the same kind of solutions. Making it more about sustenance, right? Mm -hmm. Making it more filling. Mm -hmm. Do you think the younger generation is interested or can really understand what it meant to have lived through these hardships? Đó là một câu chuyện rất là hài hước và khi các bạn thưởng thức thì các bảo là không khổ mà rất là ngon và rất là thú vị và nếu bố mẹ ông bà mà khổ như này thì các bạn đi khổ được. And I can kind of imagine those um, Vietnamese youngsters coming in here and trying the food and being like, yeah, it's actually not. Bad. <cười> it's so good. It's good. What hardships? This. Tôi chỉ cố gắng đưa cái tinh thần vào đây chứ tôi không đưa tất cả sự khổ sở vào đây. A time in Dang's memory when people didn't have much, but what little they had, they shared. For our last stop, we met a chef whose cooking embodies the soul of Hanoi. Madame Thuyet is a living legend, well known for her traditional Vietnamese fare. Her restaurant, tucked away in Hanoi's old quarter, is like a culinary time machine. She's seen it all, the good times and the bad and held on to the flavors of her ancestors all the while. And she takes great pride in it. Tại vì chúng tôi bao giờ các cụ đã nói rồi, các cụ tổ tiên của tôi và các cụ xa xưa, các cụ đã nói rằng miếng ngon nhớ lâu. Món này cũng có trên 100 năm rồi. Từ các cụ tôi phải gọi bằng cụ xong rồi truyền cho các ông bà, ông bà lại truyền bố mẹ, bố mẹ lại truyền đến tôi. Thế bây giờ tôi lại dạy lại con tôi. Cái đặc biệt và cái của cái ẩm thực này á, là khi các bạn ăn thứ nhất là đẹp mát này Thứ hai là các bạn ngửi được các cái vị nó hấp dẫn này, mùi thơm này à, Cái thứ ba nữa là, là các bạn nhai sang tay các bạn nghe She had prepared Hanoi classics for us Typically enjoyed during special family gatherings Like cauliflower and shrimp stir fry Homegrown chicken Cinnamon infused pork Spring rolls And salad and we couldn't wait to try it. Thank you. Gracefully. That's gonna, yeah. Grace. We'll see, we'll Grace. see how that goes. <laughs> it's very crisp. It's so good. It's so good. <laughs> it's so good. So when we talk about traditional Hanoi food, what does it mean to be traditional? Truyền thống có nghĩa là nó có một cái dòng lịch sử từ các cụ mấy đời trước nó truyền 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 lại gọi là một cái truyền thống và nó là một cái bất di bất dịch. Còn bây giờ nếu như chúng ta không giữ nó và chúng ta để mất đi thì nó không còn cái gì là cái cội nguồn cái sâu xa của của một dân tộc. If you look around outside in Vietnam, this country has gone through a tremendous amount of change and you must have seen all these changes. Tôi đã đúng cuộc đời của tôi đã thay qua những thay đổi, một cái thay đổi rất là rất là 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 là, là chuyển mình. À, 
Thế nhưng mà tôi nghĩ rằng tất nhiên là có một cái cuộc sống nó đi lên Cuộc sống nó đi lên Một cái um, hòa nhập Nhưng mà tôi cũng không muốn nó hòa tan Vietnamese women play a crucial role in this country that's continuously transforming. They've been preserving the past and feeding the future. Some out of a sense of mission, others out of necessity. It's a role that's not always recognized, putting some, like the street vendors, at risk of being left behind in the name of modernization. But these women are not just iconic images on postcards of Hanoi. They've helped carry Vietnam to where it is today and deserve a place in Vietnam's tomorrow. <laughs> Sup, Forkies? This episode was about the Vietnamese women who are behind the scenes, keeping the nation fed and you know, keeping the culinary knowledge alive in the face of rapid change. I think we all have women like this in our lives, whether it's our grandma, our mom, our friends, our partners. All the women. All the women. So we'd love to hear about these super women in your lives and what their specialties are. Yeah, please share with us below and in any of the social media thingies that you follow us on. And if you don't already follow us, then go go follow us on the thingies. On all the thingies. Vietnam is the last country of this season of Fork the System, but that doesn't mean our content is stopping. So make sure you come join us on... The thingies. The thingies. <laughs>